Today under module 1 we will be studying infiltration and the measurement of infiltration by using double ring infiltrometers. So the term infiltration is first used by an American geologist Robert E. Horton in the year 1935. So he used this term in order to describe the phenomena of soaking water into the soil or um, storing the water. As described in the hydrologic cycle, infiltration is the only source for groundwater replenishment and thus uh, it forms an important part in the hydrologic cycle. Now coming to the infiltration uh, definition, it refers to the entry and downward movement of water into the soil surface. So when uh, rain falls into the ground level or uh, falls into a, a, a water body, what happens? Uh, some of the water gets stored in the uh, top layers of the ground and then it uh, slowly moves downward into the soil layers. So that process is called infiltration. So when it is uh, going much deeper into the soil layers, it is called as percolation. So there is a difference between the term infiltration and percolation. Now what is infiltration rate? It is the velocity or speed at which water enters into the soil. It is uh, measured by checking how much water is entered into the soil layers in one hour. And the unit of, his, uh, of it is mm. Then coming to the distribution of soil moisture. So here you can see the um, moist soil layers immediately below the ground level. So this is the ground level and the soil layers can be seen here. Now um, the um, moist soil layers under the ground uh, level is divided into four zones. Uh, the first one is saturation zone. So this is uh, uh, the, um, the immediate layer after the ground level. Okay, So this layer is uh, a very uh, thin layer and uh, it will be always saturated. And the second layer is transition zone. It is just a, a change of zone, okay, from a saturation level to a transmission level. And the third zone is transmission zone. So the moisture content uh, in this zone is above field capacity. So in order to understand what is field capacity, I have added a figure here. Now, uh, if you check the figure, you can understand very well what is the difference between saturation, field capacity and just another term, wilting point. So, saturation is nothing but uh, you can see this figure. So, all the pores uh, of this layer, this is the soil layer and the soil layers, the voids are filled with water. But um, that is fully saturated. That means the water you can see, water is getting drained from this soil layer. So here you can see the uh, the soil layers are again filled with water. The voids are uh, filled with water, but it is not draining. So it is not in a saturated condition, but still it has some water uh, where the soil is holding some water inside the pores. Okay. Then the third uh, type is wilting point. So here you can see soil layer, but uh, they are completely dried up and there is no water content inside uh, this layer of soil. So that is the difference between these three terms, saturation, field capacity and wilting point. So in this uh, transmission zone, the moisture content uh, in this zone is above field capacity, but uh, it won't be up to a level of saturation level. That means the water content will be very, very much high in the saturation zone. Compar uh, comparing this zone, uh, the transmission zone will be having less amount of water. Okay. Now again, wetting zone. So again, this zone will be having uh, lesser amount of water compared to the transmission zone. So the uh, moisture content will be at or uh, uh, it will be near to the field capacity. So that is the difference between all these four layers. Uh, um, compared to the first zone, the wetting zone will be having less amount of water. Then next is an infiltration model uh, shown. So the process of infiltration can be easily understood from this uh, simple analogy. Okay. So uh, suppose uh, you can consider a small container covered with a wire mesh as shown in this figure. And if water is poured over this mesh, what happens? A part of it will go into this container and the uh, part of the water overflows. So that is really happening in a piece of land because when water or the precipitation falls on the ground some of the water will go 
uh, deeper into the uh, soil layers that is infiltration and what happens some some of the water will flow as runoff now uh, you can understand the um, different rates of infiltration in various type of soil so here type of the soil and the basic infiltration rate in these type of soil are shown so sand type of soil you can see the infiltration rate is less than 30 mm per hour in sandy loam 20 to 30 loam it is 10 to 20 clay loam 5 to 10 and clay it is 1 to 5 so from this uh, figure you can understand the infiltration rate is very much high in uh, sand type and it is very much low in clay type of soil okay so just to understand the um, difference in infiltration rates now coming to infiltration capacity curve now the infiltration capacity curve for a given soil formation graphically represents the variation of infiltration capacity uh, that is shown here with time time is in the x axis okay so during or after a rainfall you can check the infiltration rate with the time so in this uh, figure you can see the infiltration rate is at its maximum uh, in the beginning of the rainfall and uh, thereafter the infiltration rate gradually decreases it so you can also find out the infiltration rate at a particular time see at time t is equal to t what will be the infiltration rate f will be the infiltration rate okay so like this you can find the infiltration rate at a particular time now measurement of infiltration rate so infiltration of water into the soil can be determined by a very simple instrument called infiltrometers so there are two types of infiltrometers one is single tube or single ring type infiltrometers and the second one is double tube or double ring type of infiltrometers okay now we can see uh, both the figures this is single type infiltrometer and this is double tube infiltrometer so you will have uh, to study in detail on this double tube ring type infiltrometers so the double ring infiltrometer or uh, the cylindrical ring infiltrometer consists of a single uh, metal cylinder sorry double metal cylinder so these cylinders are uh, uh, partially inserted into the ground and the water is filled up to a certain margin inside the cylinder and after that uh, the speed of penetration of water see how it is penetrated so the speed of penetration of water is continuously measured with respect to the time and the depth of penetration of water inside this uh, cylinder is also noted in order to measure this uh, infiltration using a um, double ring infiltrometer we need a certain other materials also like uh, the first one is nothing but cylindrical ring uh, so the one uh, with 30 centimeter is kept inside and uh, another one is 60 centimeter in diameter okay then we also need a wooden piece in order to drive the cylinders inside the soil and a hammer is of course needed so uh, by using that without uh, much um, you know disturbance to the soil we can insert the cylinder easily into the ground and then uh, you will need a measuring jar of uh, 2 liter capacity and uh, a stopwatch is required in order to uh, check the time interval in which infiltration has to be measured and then uh, there is a measuring rod here you can see it clearly so this uh, measuring rod is 300 mm uh, graduation so the amount of water penetrate inside the soil within a specific time interval can be measured by using this measuring rope and also in case of a rain or something you can also use a plastic cover in order to cover this apparatus now we will see the method how the infiltration is measured by using double ring infiltrometer this figure you have to practice so i'll explain the method so initially what we are doing is we have to hammer the uh, 30 centimeter diameter ring first okay so it should be inserted at least 15 centimeter into the soil and then we have to uh, drive the measuring rod here you can see the measuring road clearly so the measuring road should be driven into the soil so that approximately uh, some 12 centimeter is left above the ground so the upper portion is just 10 centimeter and below the ground the ring is going 
to uh, to about 15 cm and above which uh, some 2 cm you will have that uh, measuring road projected okay now uh, next step is to hammer the uh, 60 cm ring into the soil so the 60 cm ring uh, should be around this uh, 30 cm ring in order to protect the soil surface from uh, when pouring the water into the cylinders so here you can see uh, the water should flow uh, vertically down so it should not go towards the sides of the soil okay so the two layers are uh, you know uh, have arranged one around the other now after the setup we are uh, moving on to the test now starting the test by pouring water into the ring until uh, the depth of uh, of the water is approximately 70 to 100 mm okay now the water in the outer layer or uh, within the two rings that is between here you can see between this uh, two rings is to prevent as i said earlier it is to prevent the lateral spread of water into uh, both the sides so by providing these rings the water should flow vertically downwards okay then we have to always uh, record uh, the clock time when the test begins and note down the water level on the uh, measuring road okay after one to two minutes uh, the uh, record the drop in water level so uh, when you pour water the water will not be Mm, will not be always stagnant at this place it will definitely go down so the time taken is noted the drop in water level in the inner ring um, on uh, the measuring road is noted so whenever you note it you have to also record the water level and we have to uh, also note one thing that we have to maintain the water level outside the ring similar to that inside so or both this layer or both these rings should be having the same uh, depth of water so that should be checked now we know after um, dropping so much of water at one stage it will be moving down very slowly so continue the test until the drop in water level is the same over the same time interval okay and uh, note um, uh, this test should, should be done at least uh, um, like two times uh, in order to get the values accurate okay that is how we measure the infiltration rate or the infiltration by using double ring infiltrometer now there is also a simple formula uh, which is prepared by Horton by using which we will be calculating the infiltration rate Okay, that we will be seeing in the next lecture class.